The reason I ask is my very first guest is Kay Hutchinson and she has written uh, My Life in 37 Therapies from Yoga to Hypnosis and Why Voodoo is Never the Answer. Um, it's a really fascinating book. As you know, she's probably preaching to the converted someone, an old hippie like me. But I would love to know if you've ever had an epiphany. Can you share it with us? And whilst you're thinking about it, you can sit back and listen to Kay. Now then, on a sunny morning in the south of France, Kay Hutchinson's life changed forever. At the time, she was taking a break from her very high-flying career as a producer. And as she peered out to the sea from her hotel window, she made a massive decision to leave her husband forever. Immediately, she packed a case, got on uh, the next flight home, and set off on a journey to find herself. She tried out 37 different therapies across the world and her book is called My Life in 37 Therapies and it chronicles what she calls her midlife crisis and shows how we can all find some inner peace. I am so intrigued by this and I'm really pleased to say Kay is here sitting in front of me. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jill. So, so you were a producer, is that right? Well, it was kind of, it was half creative and half operational roles in uh, lots of different companies, BBC, Channel 4, Channel 5, Disney. And um, that was really, that was really my whole life, actually. I'd kind of devoted my whole life to my career and working really hard. And uh, I seemed to be working harder and harder and harder, but, but quite happily so um, until this time. So do you think, and I, you know, to, because of there are people involved in this, so we won't go into too much detail, but do you think your relationship had, there were signs there before, but you hadn't seen them? Or, or, or do you think, literally, you didn't realise until you were away from the UK that things had got that bad? I think it was a much bigger thing than about one person. I mean, I think it, it's easy for me now to actually work out exactly what happened. At the time, I really wasn't sure. But I think it was a combination of all the horm hormones going yeah. haywire. Yeah. It was my age. But also, I think I had completely shut down. Sort of, it, it was really strange because I, I absolutely felt compelled to get away and just be on my own. And I think it was partly due to the fact that I had had to deal with People. the death of my mother, actually. Oh, right, no, right. my mother died of cancer after about four years of really miserable treatments. And then I hadn't really recovered from that. I mean, to be honest with you, I just threw myself back into work. And uh, a, a couple of months down the line, then I found a lump on my husband's throat. And here we were again, starting all the radiotherapy, ke chemotherapy and, and me, I was still working, having to kind of come back and look after my husband when I got home from work. So I think what had really happened was that I'd completely, um, it was meltdown really, because I, I hadn't dealt with anything in my personal life proper, properly and I think my system just rebelled and said enough mm. you haven't paid any attention to yourself and actually we're not going to let that happen mm. any longer do you have children no we didn't have children so, I mean thankfully yeah I was going to say so you have you yes. have you had a certain amount of freedom indeed didn't you if you indeed. chose if you chose it and it is interesting this because I'm you know this is the media and we are considered very lucky to be in it a lot of people want to be in the media so to just throw it all up in the air and go actually no I'm going to walk away from this bubble is incredibly brave mm. and at the end of this I'm, I'm dying to know whether you regret it or not but because are you I mean you're an author now but are you working in production at all? Um, I think I'm still very much involved in the creative industries because I, I run a small publishing company and we do all kinds of things like video. So we just don't do the, the publishing of children's books. We also do video games, audio book. We did an audio book with Richard E. Grant, which was just a total um, uh, lucky, lucky thing a few years ago. But I'm still very much involved in, in kind of multi-platform. And things. did all that come out? Uh, did did you that companies start after you'd had this epiphany or had uh, yes you i mean it? Uh, it, it did um but actually just to, to wind back a little bit um i didn't actually leave my job i i did actually uh, 
leave to be on my own. And then uh, a year later, I was made redundant, uh-huh. which was a total shocker for me. Synchronicity, because, though, really, in a yes, way. Yes, yes. Um, and I wondered whether they had noticed that I was changing at work. Yeah. But I think that was just in my head. How, oh gosh, it's really interesting. And I and it's so, you know, women hormonally have chapters in their lives and we should really... Oh gosh, celebrate them how can you when you think you're going crazy because I've been there you know but looking back on it each you know it's a real opportunity to start a new chapter which I think men are far more linear they don't have these big massive hormonal changes that women do so really exciting I am putting the gloss on this really exciting to think okay you can for lots of reasons change direction and that's where this book picks up and I love so you are almost preaching to the converted. I mean, I spent a lot of time in, in Brighton. So, so many of these therapies I know of, I've done, and, every, and you could go on and on doing a 37 more, to be honest. But wh- who, who was your guide? And who, I know you had your friend Dee that, um, that you often sort of um, went through therapies with, but who was guiding you? What was, was it a yoga class? What was the beginning of this journey? Um, well, I think it was partly because I, I went straight back and I, I did actually go to my GP. <clears throat> I moved out went and found a flat. And uh, the first thing I did was go to my GP and she thought, oh, whoa, what, what on earth is going on here? This is a bit too much. So she sent me off for tests because she was probably in her 50s and she thought, oh, it's probably the beginning of the menopause. But this is a bit extreme. But it took quite a long time to get all those tests done. And then she was trying to find someone for me to go and talk to a counsellor or something. And uh, in the meantime, I thought, you know, I've got to do something myself. Because like you were saying, I was having panic attacks. I wasn't sleeping. I was really feeling totally not myself. And it it was like a a fresh start. But I'd love to say it was a lovely fresh start. But it, but it, 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 what it was really scary for me. And of course, I felt tremendous guilt for my poor husband, who's an absolutely decent, lovely person, not his fault. But um, I think uh, it was all organic. So I started, I went for a massage to calm myself down. I found, oh, that made me feel good. Then along the road from where I'd moved to, there was an acupuncture Chinese hair place. I went there for acupuncture and I did have some very funny experiences because because it wasn't a plan and I wasn't working myself my way through a list. I kind of just was open to these experiences because I needed help of some description. So I kind of went along and some of them I wasn't really prepared for and they were disastrous and some of them really helped. I would say that all of them did help in some way. But there are people out there who are quite happy to take your money for very little return. Indeed. And I, you know, I know that because I will be led in, in this this direction, you know, all the time because I believe the answer is there. I honestly believe the answer is there in a therapy, in therapy and a therapy. But there's a lot of... I was going to say something there that would have got me into trouble. There's a lot of rubbish around, you know, and you have to wade your way through it and find the people who have um, integrity and those who have been on a weekend call somewhere and just suddenly set up. Um, but the massage thing is really interesting because it's now become a way of life for you. You have massage quite regularly, don't you? I do. And that, that is sometimes just um, if I've been overdoing it at the gym uh, or it could be just that I'm I'm very... Uh, nervy about something and I find that it's one of the most effective ways for me, it's not for everyone but for me to actually calm down and just uh, remember that the sort of little person that I am I'm not just a doer of things running around doing things I'm actually a person at the centre of it. And also it is such a barometer that you know the moment someone lays their hands on you a good masseur will often say gosh what's that and they'll find a knot and they'll find, I remember even my hairdresser once massaged my head she's a hairdresser and she went what on earth is going on she went your scalp is like rigid and I went really and she went yes she went I could just feel it in your and I and like just to have that rather than sitting talking to a doctor saying I feel a bit stressed out just to have someone laying their hands on you and saying right this is where all your stress is gathering Mm -hmm. you know what is going on so I yeah if you can have massage I think it's wonderful I think it's like one of the nicest things a human being can do to another human being, don't mm. you? And it, it's so, I mean, it's such an ancient uh, mm. traditional thing. I think one of the things that comes out in the book, because I did so much over a period of time, and I really, all of the time that I wasn't working, which was a hell of a lot of the time, 
I was actually thinking about therapies, going on retreats and and actually spending a lot of time just walking and thinking, walking in Hyde Park, listening to music. Music was a huge part of my recovery in some ways. Um, But I think that what comes out of it is I really now know who really has the touch and is really good and is trained and actually has it in their 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 system. They haven't just been as you say, on a training course, you can tell almost right away mm. whether this person has the sensitivity for it. And so, and and I, I love aromatherapy, people, people who know how to blend the oils and actually pick something which is right for how you're feeling mm. at the time. I love that. You know, you go into some places and they'll give you different scents to mm. choose. And it, it's what you need at the time that you often go for. So I, I, I think I think that was part of the journey was finding out the best ones and, and remembering to check things out before you just launch in. Which so I did right. So and many most times. of these, I know you were on retreat, so you were going away. But for most of the, the practitioners, were they in London? Because you were moving from flat to flat, weren't you? You were yes, staying in a part. Different so were most of, of them in London? Yes, yes, they were. Because, as I was saying, in Brighton, you can literally have about you know, 80 different treatments in a day and never repeat yourself. So, And I was smiling when I was reading your book because it's like the affirmations. Now, I was doing affirmations in my yoga class in Brighton in the 80s. You know, when you'd finish a class and they'd say, take um, an angel card, they'd call it, and that would have, from the brass bowl, your your affirmation on um, just explain affirmations and how you discovered affirmations. Well, I discovered affirmations really through the books of Louise Hay. And I, I think this is such an interesting thing because um, when I was looking at books and beginning to read up on a lot of these different therapies, um, you know, I think you genuinely are drawn to the things that are good for you. Now, there are huge numbers of books and many very, very well-known male gurus of positive thinking and affirmation. But for some reason, for me, uniquely, um, Louise Hay is the one that I really connected with. And I think that's because, first of all, she's a woman, but she had been through such a traumatic childhood herself. And she, piece by piece, um, really put the jigsaw pieces back together in her life and ended up being mo- the most fantastically oh. successful She was publisher. a trailblazer. She was yes. the first of her kind, wasn't she? Really. And, um, yeah, and the, everyone would carry a copy of Louise Hay <laughs> everywhere. Um, was that the Heal Your Body heal one your or body. the Heal Your Life? No, Heal Your yeah, Body. Heal your oh, body. then followed by Heal Your Life, yes. I think it was. Yeah. Um, so can I, when you say, you know, you need to find out those who have the touch than those that don't, and I really do believe, I believe I would put it in, in that some people have spirituality and some people don't. And spirituality can show itself through so many different ways. And, you know, you probably know that I practice yoga every single day. I'm a yoga junkie. But there are some teachers that have literally no spirituality where it is just an exercise class. I totally agree. I and totally agree. I mean, the funny thing is that for some people, that is absolutely what mm. they want and that is all they need. What I discovered, because actually, like you, yoga, for me, um, it doesn't matter all, all of the other therapies that I tried, but yoga is is underlying everything that I do now. And I, I find these wonderful teachers mm. who bring together, and I don't really call it mind, body, spirit, I call it mind, body and intuition, because it's about kind of listening to yourself and valuing um, the, the kind of human presence that you are, because I think for so much of people's lives, they totally ignore, they, they just look after the mind for working hard on work, the body for working hard, push, punishing themselves at the gym, pushing themselves and all that great, great, did all that. But actually, a lot of people like I did completely forgot that they have a lot of wisdom inside themselves that you can listen to and actually learn a lot from. I mean, after all, as Louis, you know, as many people say, you know, your body breathes itself. You, you, you actually have the most amazing system of wisdom that is just to allow you to exist. And you don't even think about breathing. You don't think about healing. The body does all these things naturally. And I think if you can tune in to those sort of um, ideas, then I think you get a much more rounded um, experience. And yoga is brilliant for and it. That, and as they say, it's all in the breath. And that's what life is all in the breath. Pranayama, that's what gets us through it. Even though we don't think about it, as you say, it's just carrying on. That's how incredible it is. 
do you, I could talk to you forever, but we're running out of time and people need <laughs> to read the book. But can I ask you this then? Because I try to take it with me throughout life. I try to be a kinder person to myself, to other people through my yoga practice because I'm not very good at meditating. And, you know, someone like my mother who's done yoga for the whole, she's 94. She she says she she's now very disabled, but she says I am now practicing pure yoga. She's not doing any asanas. She's not doing any physical because she literally can't. Mm-hmm. She went, the yoga now is the purest it's ever been because it's in her head and it's getting her through everything that she's having to struggle with. How extraordinary is that? That's and but I but I wonder in this you know you're still as you say in the creative art you're still dealing with egos you're still dealing in a very ruthlessly competitive market can you with everything you've learned in the writing of this book and in all these practices which are out there spiritual mystic can you still use it in times of great controversy and when everything's being thrown at you can you still keep your center and your focus it, it is challenging at times, but I think you can. I think the biggest lesson I've learned is that the more you actually pay attention to yourself and appreciating what you do, it's a very odd thing, but the better you are with other people and therefore there is a really wonderful exchange. But don't forget yourself. We're too we're too busy hating ourselves and being being horrible to ourselves. The more you actually pay attention to your own self and, and actually I would say love yourself, the better you will be when you're out in the world with other people and you will love other people more. And don't feel guilty about it. And that's your absolute, we're made to feel, you know, so guilty about if you if you put yourself first. And that's not in a, you know, it, it's not in a sort of egotistic way, but you should really be kind to yourself. Be kind, be kind, be kind. I had a yoga teacher that would always end the class. Namaste, be kind, be kind, be kind. It's so, such a great mantra, isn't it? Wonderful. Um, as I say, you've been preaching to the converted, <laughs> but for everyone else out there, um, it's up for you to read Kay Hutchison's uh, My Life in 37 Therapies. And it is so interesting, you know, the massage, the mantras, the breathing, the silence, the retreats, it's all within the covers. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Really lovely to meet you. Okay, so we're asking, ever had an epiphany? If so, you can call, you can text, you can email.